All right. Hello, and welcome to A Safe Place. This is a podcast where we talk about school shootings and how to keep kids safe in schools. I am your host, Louis Aponte, and today I am honored. When I say I'm honored, this is an understatement. I am honored to have my guest, uh, my first guest, Lori Al-Hadef. Al- excuse me. Uh, in 2018, uh, Lori lost her 14-year-old daughter, Alyssa, in the Parkland shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. And since then, she's been fighting like crazy to make sure that no other parent has to suffer the pain that she went through uh, using her nonprofit organization, Make Schools Safe. Hello, Lori. Thank you so much for uh, for taking your time out of your busy schedule to join me. I understand you are um, on vacation. Well, a little bit on vacation now. Yes. Hi, how are you? I'm wonderful. I'm so happy to see you. I think the last time we connected was back in January. Yes. 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 It was just before I moved away from Florida to go to Virginia to take uh, a new job as a librarian. So, um, you know, I'm thrilled that I've been able to keep in touch with you all this time. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you for having me today. Absolutely. Um, So let me go ahead and jump right into it. Um, I know so much has happened since the last time we connected. And um, I understand you were recently invited to go to the White House uh, for an event uh, for the passing of the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Uh, What was that all about? What was your experience? So it was an amazing day, historic, and just being there at the White House and hearing President Biden speak on the Safer Communities Act is so um, important piece of legislation. Like, honestly, it was the first time in 30 years that we have passed a piece of gun safety legislation as it might not be enough, it's still something and moving forward in the right direction. Also the Luke and Alex um, safety commission where there is gonna be a clearing house for school safety, which I think is wonderful because there's so many, there's a billion dollar safety industry out there and that um, to have this clearing house so schools and school districts and principals can go to the clearing house to properly vet out all these different school safety measures that they would like to implement in their schools. Okay, so is this like a um, like a, just a vetting process or is this like a source of um, funds that they could use to help keep their schools safer? No, it's a vetting process for different school safety um, you know, whether it's ballistic glass or or fencing or a panic button. So I I kind of think of it sort of like, you know, we have appliances and, um, you know, they vet out and give the grades to different appliances or, you know, uh, data on it. It's sort of the same thing. Okay, excellent. Excellent. And when does that take place? Like immediately? So um, I don't know their timeline, but okay. there's been money allocated to help really um, just expand the program. That's so great. And, and how did the White House, um, I guess, how did you become invited? Like they already knew all the work that you've been doing in the past, or did you have to write to them? Like, how do they know to contact you? So, you know, because um, my daughter, Alyssa, was affected by gun violence, she was shot in her school. Right. Um, They had invited uh, about, I think, 2000 people that were affected by gun violence. Wow. So, like, for example, I met a mom whose 14 year old son was also shot and killed. And um, so there was a lot of people there that were either affected by gun violence or helping to, you know, create a a safer country and safer schools. That's wonderful. That's wonderful that so many people were able to to turn out. Um, You know, like you said, I I think this is a great step forward in moving towards preventing gun violence in schools. But based on your experience, you know, talking to these parents, like the 14 year old, the one who lost the 14 year old son, you said? Yes. And, uh, you know, what more? I mean, what more would you like to see done towards making schools safe? Something that you think would actually pass? Well, so we would like to see Alyssa's law, panic violence, mass notification in a emergency situation pass as a standard level school safety protection in every state across the country. So that would be my, that's my number one goal. Number two is that through my nonprofit organization, Make Our School Safe, mm-hmm. we have students that create a Make Our School Safe club where the students are in their school helping to create that culture of safety within their school. 
And we've connected with an organization called I2P, Invent to Prevent, who's connected with the McCain Institute and Homeland Security. And they have been doing school safety projects with our, our Make Our School Safe Club students to help create this safety project. And in turn, that culture of safety in their school will be improved. And these students would be more apt to, you know, if they see something, say something, report something on an app to uh, be able to prevent violence from happening before it happens. That's an amazing collaboration. I love that. So the app, is it, is it something like through the school or is it the, the app is something that you created through your organization? No. So the See Something, Say Something app, like for example, um, in the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Act, they have uh, created what's called Fortify Florida. So uh -huh. this is a tip app, See Something, Say Something. We have also Safer Watch. But students or anyone, parents, they can report something um, as themselves or anonymously. And that information will go directly to law enforcement so they can vet out and make sure that this is not a credible threat. That's excellent. Now, uh, let me ask you, because um, I know with certain school shootings, um, the shooters are were like kind of aware of, of like the emergency processes, uh, like, you know, they'll pull the fire alarm, for example, and they know everyone's going to be flooding out, that kind of thing. Um, is there any kind of safety measures with this app for is somebody's like pulling a prank or something like that? You know, would the police be able to tell, you know, what phone it came from kind of thing? Yeah, they can track uh, the I2P address, I think, or okay. IP address. IP address, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and um, there is, you know, things like, um, you know, people will report something like, um, I didn't do my, the dog ate my math homework. <laughs> you know, something very silly, right? right, right Obviously, right. they, you know, so there is um, a degree of that. However, they have actually prevented thousands of, um, acts of violence to schools through mm -hmm. the reporting, see something, say something. Okay. I had a student report to me that they were going to kill themselves. Oh. And I reported it on the safer watch app and law enforcement was able to get to that child before they did something to themselves. Wow. The students actually contacted you. That's wow. And they were based in Florida. Yes. That's, that's amazing. Um, know, I think that, you know, I think a lot of times when, you know, maybe it's cyberbullying that happens to your child and parents, they don't, they don't know what to do. They don't, right. you know, they're not empowered. And so when, you know, I tell them like report it on Safer Watch or Four or Five Florida mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. be able to empower our parents to know what to do with these types of threats that are happening to their child. Right. I think it's so important because, um, we want to get them help and we want to make sure that their child's not bullied right. and, and that this type of violence is not happening. Now, being that they're contacting you and, and just, they don't know what to do. Do you, do you feel it's um, part of the fact that, that maybe they don't feel comfortable talking to their own family members or, or, you know, their teachers? I mean, what, what is it? Why do they? Um, I think um, because I'm their school board member, I think it's uh. um, they know that I'm going to bring it in, to the right, you know, person to be able to get them help. Um, but I think it's also uh, maybe just not having the confidence yet to report something right. on an app like this, like Fortify Florida. But mm -hmm. the more I think that people know about it and know that this is the right way to that, you know, this is one way I should say that you can report something. Um, I think it's very helpful. That's so great. I mean, the fact that they know that you are somebody they can turn to, I think that's so important. I think in every community that, you know, every kid needs someone like that, that they can turn to, you know. Absolutely. Um, um, so you, you briefly touched on this earlier about Alyssa's Law. Um, I understand that you've helped um, get Alyssa's Law passed in Florida, New Jersey, and now New York. Is that correct? That is correct. And um, for, for those that are listening that don't know what Alyssa's Law is, can you kind of go into detail as far as, you know, what is it and, and how does it keep kids safe in schools? Alyssa's Law is a panic button that we want to empower our teachers to press a button. Uh, it can be an app on their phone. It could be a badge they wear around their neck or a hardwired button. And once that button is pushed, 
it's directly linked to law enforcement. So law enforcement can get on the scene as quickly as possible. They can pull up the cameras so they have eyes on the scene and so that they can direct their law enforcement in exactly where to go. And then it's law enforcement's job to go in, engage and take down the threat. Right. Uh, so we passed Alyssa's law in New Jersey, Florida, and now just in New York. Um, this past week, I had a meeting with Governor Hochul in mm. New York, talking to her about Alyssa's law and other school safety measures. And, um, you know, one, it's honoring my daughter, Alyssa, because I want to keep her memory alive. Of but two is that we see this as a standard. It, it should be a standard level of safety protection in every school across the country. Right. We have two federal bills, the um, Safer Schools Act, HR 2717. And we are looking for co-sponsors. So if you know your congressman or congresswoman, the Safer Schools Act allows schools to do a school security risk assessment. And then based on their vulnerabilities at their school, they can apply for federal funding to fix those problems at their school. So they might not have their panic button. They might not have fencing for single point of entry. They might need bulletproof glass. So the Safer Schools Act is uh, a federal piece of legislation that will help to keep our schools safer. That's excellent. I didn't I didn't know that, that specific piece of detail. So thank you for, for mentioning that. I really appreciate that. Now, um, a lot of the gun safety groups, um, especially you know, following a major mass shooting or school shooting, um, they uh, they usually go for you know tighter tighter you know gun regulation you know as far as getting access to a gun or you know um, you know stronger mental health laws and things you know why did you choose this particular approach It's very very unique. Yes, and you know I appreciate you saying that. Um, we try very hard to stay in the school safety lane. I just, for me um, and my husband and make our school safe, we know that there is tremendous amount of people that are, are in the gun safety lane, mm -hmm. but we feel that at the end of the day, that is a very polarizing fight. I mean, look, we just passed the piece of legislation that took 30 years. And at the end of the day, we are still sending our kids to school and we need to make sure that our schools are the safest place for our students. You know, if you think about it, you know, our banks, our, our um, you know, our, where our elected officials in our government, there's, there's, they have all these, they have metal detectors, they have all these safety um, things in place. They have panic buttons yeah. and, you know, our schools, we have to protect our kids in schools. We have to make sure that our kids come home alive and that so we feel that this is a nonpartisan issue. This is something whether you're Republican or Democrat, we all can agree that we need to protect our kids in our schools. Agreed. Absolutely agree. Um, I, I, um, I'm, I'm a librarian. I do some outreach at local schools and um, yeah, there's lots of areas uh, of uh, levels of security uh, just to get in. You know, I mean, there's multiple panes that you have to go through. They have like a camera and, and a little speaker box and you have to identify who you are. So, um, yeah, it only makes sense that these things happen. I mean, even in the library, we have that little panic button underneath, uh, you know, the front desk because, you know, we get some pe angry people, too. <laughs> and, and we right. want, want the police to be able to respond right away. So, yeah, that's so important. So um, um, being that it was, it was Florida the first place where you got to pass or was it New Jersey? New Jersey. Now, uh, please enlighten me. I'm sorry for my ignorance. Is New Jersey, do they have a Democratic or Republican governor? Uh, Democrat. Democrat. And whereas Florida, we have a Republican governor. And yes. so like have, with Alyssa's law, have you been receiving any kind of, uh, did you ever receive any resistance? And if so, what kind? No, actually, um, Alyssa's law has been passed unanimously in all the committees in the House, in the Senate, Republican, Democrat. I don't personally know one person that voted no on Alyssa's law. Wow. And I'm that's amazing. really amazing and proud to say that. Yeah. Um, you know, this, listen, mass notification in a life threatening emergency situation mm -hmm. is key. Seconds really matter. Yeah. On February 14, 2018, I texted my daughter, Alyssa, when the shooting was happening. And I told Alyssa to run and hide that help was on the way. Right. In my mind, I was thinking, you know, law enforcement is going in there, that they were engaging, taking down the threat. I thought EMS was 
coming in and, and taking her to the hospital. Mm-hmm. I, um, when I, when I received the text message, um, saying that Alyssa was shot, I immediately went to law enforcement and I asked them, you know, where should I go? My daughter was shot because in my mind that she was already at the hospital. Right. Right. And, and you had to wait like not. nine hours or something just to get a response. It was eight or nine hours before you. Even yeah. We waited the whole day. It was like two um, 15 in the morning that we finally uh, were told by the FBI that Alyssa was shot and killed. Oh my God. Yeah. And no, I, I recently watched again, um, your CNN uh, interview uh, following the shooting and just, I, I had a hard time just watching it, but I, it's, it's so necessary, you know, cause I mean, you don't, you don't want any other family, you don't one, you don't never want to go through that, but you sure, sure as heck don't want anybody in the future to have to go through that. And I, I imagine that's what motivated you uh, to start make school safe uh, for parents and kids that are, that are concerned about, you know, gun violence in schools, you know, do you have any advice for them? I'm, you know, I mean, they don't, they don't know all, they don't have all the connections politically that you might have, you know, how do we keep kids school, uh, kids, keep kids safe in schools? Yeah. So um, I, I appreciate this question very much. So one thing I think it's, it's extremely important and especially after seeing what happened at Rob elementary school, right. We have to learn from the mistakes from past school shootings. And what I mean by that is, are we locking doors to the school? Are we locking the classroom doors? Right. You know, there is things that we can implement in school safety and learn from these tragedies and the death of my daughter. Mm-hmm. And the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Act was a, an amazing piece of legislation that was passed after uh, the, the shooting in Parkland. And, you know, we are a Republican, you know, we have a Republican governor and we raised the, the gun age from 18 to 21. We That's have all red guns, flag- rifles too. Yes. Wow. Okay. Wow. Red flag laws. Mm-hmm. Um, there was um, a lot of different uh, school safety, mental health, um, requiring an SRO officer in every school. Mm-hmm. So, I would, you know, I think it's really important as parents that you ask those tough questions. Um, We are going to be putting out through my nonprofit, Make Our School Safe, right before school, school safety tips. And um, I really suggest uh, your listeners to go to our website, Mm makeourschoolsafe.org and uh, sign up for our email list because we are going to be sending out these school safety tips Mm -hmm. and There's about 15 of them, but I would take that and go to your principal, ask them, you know, are you doing behavioral threat assessments? Do you have your panic button? And these are, you know, really important, crucial pieces of school safety measures that we have to, you know, it's not an option. We have to make sure they're implemented in our schools. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you kind of touched on, on one of the lessons that I hoped we would learn after uh, the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas shooting, um, how there was a delay where they didn't go in, they didn't engage, you know, they have bulletproof vests, they have, you know, you know, weapons of their own, these kids didn't. And, you know, those, every crucial minute was, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, people are dying, these kids are dying, and they have no way to defend themselves. Um, but then the same thing happened in Uvalde, uh, Texas, where they didn't go in. And i um, like, how did we not learn this lesson yet? You know, I understand it's a different state. They're governed by different laws and everything. But, you know, n- <laughs> these ki- these are kids. They don't have any way to defend themselves. Even the teachers. I mean, even if the teachers were armed, I mean, you, what can you do against an AR-15? You know, right. I, mean, I think, um, you know, it goes back to the most crucial part of school safety is training, training, training. Right. And it's right. not just, you know, training for our students and our teachers, but it's, it's law enforcement training. Yeah. And, you know, if they are not willing to go in and engage and take down the threat, then this is not the job for them. And they right. should not be a law enforcement officer who's going to be responding to a mass you know, school shooting. And um, I think that's really important. Um, you know, this is your job. You know, um, when I passed my SRO officer at my son's school, you know, I say to him, I say, you, you know, you've got this, like, you, you know, you're going to protect my boys. And, right. you know, of course he's like, yes, 
But that means that if it's something is going down, that you have to go in and engage and take down the threat immediately. Absolutely. You can't I, I, wait. Yes, I, 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 bl- I feel that that's a, a very fair assessment. I have friends that are in law enforcement. I have family members that were law enforcement. And I understand that's a scary situation that no, no cop wants to be in. But I mean, like I said, when you compare the fact that you are trained, you are a trained, you know, police, you know, law enforcement officer, you have a uh, bulletproof vest, you have, you know, weapons of your own that you could use. I mean, I know they have probably have AR, you know, 15s of their own um, if they needed to use them. Um, you know, you stand a much better chance against this active shooter than these kids do. Now uh, you were talking about the, the, the panic button, how um, it allows the police to see, um, do they have, do the police have access to the cameras from the police stations? So um, they, they should. And that's, you know, very important because if the panic button is pushed in room 1216, Mm -hmm. then law enforcement should be able to pull up the cameras. Maybe, you know, not necessarily they have cameras in the classroom, but they do in the hallways or outside areas so that they can pull up those um, areas within the school and to be able to get eyes on the scene to, to see what is exactly going on. Right. And um, if I remember correctly, um, during the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas shooting, uh, wasn't there like a 20 minute delay in the video footage? And they had, that's yes. why they had a hard time finding the shooter. Is that what happened? Yes. Has that been corrected since that way it's live? Of course. Yes. That's wonderful. Okay. I'm, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Um, there was one more question um, and, and I hope you forgive me uh, for asking because I know it's, it's very personal. Um, you have been through so much and um, I don't know how, if, if I was in your situation, I don't, I don't know if I'd be able to do what you have done. How do you stay strong? How do you stay focused? You know, how do you, what do you, where do you draw your strength from? So I draw my strength from Alyssa. I say that I'm Alyssa's voice and I know that, you know, Alyssa was tragically, you know, taken from us, but I don't want her death to be in vain. I want to keep fighting for Alyssa. And it's so important to me that I make sure that her brothers are safe in school and her friends and, you know, all the children. It's so important. And, um, I, you know, my family and my friends and the love and support that I receive for them, receive from them really empowers me to, to keep going. And um, we also, after the shooting, we got a golden doodle dog. Her name's Roxy and Roxy's um, a therapy dog, but just been so loving for our family and helpful for us to, you know, get through the grieving process. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's grief is, is a roller coaster and, um, it's, it's hard, you know, but I just think of my daughter, Alyssa and think of, you know, how Alyssa was such a fighter and had, um, she had a big voice. She was captain of her soccer team. Nice. And I know Alyssa would want me to keep going and keep fighting for her. And, um, that's, that's what I do. That's amazing. And I, and I know you've really honored her memory and I, I really appreciate you just, you know, keeping this fight going and uh, I hope to help, you know, do the same. Um, maybe not on the same level as you do, but uh, <laughs> I'm learning from you. So uh, you know, I'm even trying to talk to, you know, get a meeting with the governor in Virginia to see if we can get Alyssa's law passed. So I'm trying. <laughs> so um, before we leave, um, I, I know you briefly touched on it. Um, if people want to, again, if people want to find out more about you and your work with Make Schools Safe, you know, where can they find you? So they can go to makeourschoolsafe.org and uh, sign up for our email list. Please follow us on social media. Uh, you can volunteer. We have a volunteer handbook. Uh, you donate. Um, but we always need volunteers to help us try to get Alyssa's Law passed in your state. So go to makeourschoolsafe.org. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lori. It's been an honor seeing you again. And uh, if you ever have any, anything else you want to share, any, any updates, any news, anything like that, you know, feel free to reach out to me, you know, how to find me. And uh, sure. I'd love to have you aboard. Thank you. All right. And please tell Terry. So hello. I will. Okay. <laughs>